السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی نیم از محمد عثمان خان اینڈ آئی ایم فرام کشمیر ورکنگ ان دہلی اینڈ سی آر انڈیا آئی ٹو آر ڈاکٹر ذاکر نائک دیٹ وین ڈڈ یو فرسٹ کم ٹو نو دیٹ پروفیٹ محمد پیس بی اپن ہم از مینشن ان ہندو اسکرپچرس اینڈ واٹ واز یور ریئیکشن آئی واز یولی شاکڈ وین آئی فرسٹ کیم ٹو نو اباؤٹ اٹ As I'm working with Hindus, I want to give dawa to them. Can you give me a few tips on how I should initiate this conversation with them? I'm enrolled in dawa training program and I request you please expedite the upload speed. I have memorized a few of your references from Hindu scriptures, but how can I get basic knowledge so that it should not give an impression that I have not read these scriptures and I, I have just memorized few passages. I want to become, sorry, I want to become a full-time Dai. Can you give me a few contacts in Delhi or any part in India who can help me in the same? Jazakallah khair. Mumbun Usman Khan was working in Delhi and asked the question that he has maybe heard my talk on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scriptures. And he asked me, when did I first come to know that Prophet Muhammad was mentioned in the Hindu scriptures because when he came to me, he was shocked. As you know that I was inspired by Sheikh Ahmad Didad when I met him in 1997. And after a few years after that, I read this book by the title Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the World Religious Scriptures. And in the book, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hindu scriptures written by Vidyarthi, written by Hindu. And this was in the early 90s. maybe early 90s exactly i don't remember early 90s or mid 90s and even i was shocked no one had told me before that uh, prophet muhammad peace be upon him was mentioned in the scripture and if you of course i knew about prophet muhammad mentioned in the bible i knew many prophecies and when i compared between the prophecies mentioned of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the bible and the prophecies in the scriptures the prophecies in the hindu scriptures were multiple times more more and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned by name multiple times more multiple times more in the hindu scriptures than the bible bible okay you can remember all the verses and 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 the references but in hindu scriptures there are too many hundreds in the bible there are less than that so and i started using that in the question and answer session the first time i gave a talk on this topic similarities between islam and hinduism i give this talk i i remember it was in 2004 in azad maidan in bombay i remember azad maidan that's a big it's a big ground and that time it was one of the few largest lectures at that time you know 18000 people had come i know we had put uh, we had kept 18000 chairs and about 20000 people attended the talk and that was the first talk which was on a, on a, on a grand scale at that time in 2004 and after that i even gave a talk on muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the religious world scriptures and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hindu scriptures i gave in chennai and the other parts so all these t- three talks were closed in the in in 2004 5 6 7 yes it did shock me and when i prepared for my talk on similarity with islam and hinduism i did a lot of research because in kishanti it was easy shaykh didad made it so easy you read his books you can even debate with the pope he gave it to you on a platter but there were very few books that were written on hinduism and islam and i think this was the only book i could find prophet muhammad in new scripture then i did my own research and i did some own study and read the scripture then i prepared this talk on similarities between islam and christianity tried to divide it in my own way comparing with the pillars of islam with the pillars of iman and you know various things while answering many question answer sessions you know regarding what about about jihad mentioned in the quran jihad mentioned in the hindu scriptures and all this what i've been saying for the last few years i compiled and created and made and gave a new talk similarity between islam and hinduism regarding your last question that you would, you have you have enrolled in the dawa training program What the brother is referring to is our new platform Al Hidayah, where we have 
a training course called as Let's Become Effective Dais, International Dawa Training Program. And we have launched this platform in 2021, about three years ago. And one of the courses is, which is the USP, Unique Selling uh, Course, is Let's Become Effective Dais. This is the recording of the training program we did in Bombay, where we call 20 different uh, dais or students from 12 different countries. We call them in Bombay. It was for 45 days, 33 days of training was there. And we recorded this on 14 cameras. And now we are editing and releasing it. We have a program of editing one, one part per month. Because unlike before where we had a big team of 300 people working in the media, now our team is smaller. And these programs have got 14 cameras, they are 4K and 8K, very voluminous, very heavy. So it takes multiple times more. So each course is for about one and a half, two hours of recording. So the recording time for these courses take double or triple, double than that than a normal lecture. And compared to our Dr. Zakir Naik, about four or five times more. So we have a policy of releasing one part per month. And even that sometimes we aren't able to do it. Sometimes it becomes one part in two months. But of course, it will take years to release. So you can follow this course, see this course, follow the course guide. But as far as your knowledge on Hinduism is concerned, I would request you to see fewer of my few of my cassettes. Number one is similarity between Islam and Hinduism. Number two, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scriptures. And then there are other question and answer sessions. So if you hear these talks of mine and these questions, so if you go through Ask Dr. Zakir and see all the questions on Hinduism or see all my questions in public lectures we deal with Hinduism, this inshallah will give you knowledge regarding your, regarding your question that how can I, I memorize these verses, but how can I give the impression that I know a lot? You should not give false impression. As a Dai, you should not give false impression. False impression. If you really want to know, read the scriptures, I would advise you to read the scriptures. If you read Bhagavad Gita, it's not very voluminous. Read it. So the references I've given, okay, read the, the references, memorize those references, and read the book Bhagavad Gita or some of the books, you know. So at least you have an idea. Or what you can do if you cannot read the full original Mahabharat, you can read the shorter version. If you can't read the full Ramayana, read the shorter version. There are many versions available. Short, medium, long, very long, very voluminous. So, if you want, or you see my video cassettes, and you just repeat it. If someone tells you where you found it from, I heard it from Dr. Zakir Naik. Is it authentic? You check it up. It's been checked. So, you don't have to give a false impression that you are Dr. Zakir Naik. You don't have to give the false impression that you have read thousands of books on Hinduism. No. You have to be honest. But some books are which are popular and not very time consuming is the Bhagavad Gita. It will just take a few hours or a little bit more for you to read the full Bhagavad Gita. Even that has got different volumes, etc. But naturally the important books are the Vedas. If you hear my talks, you'll find out. So you don't have to give a false impression. Regarding, do you have any contacts in Delhi or India? You don't require contacts. Everything is available now on the social media. You don't have to go to that city to learn. To meet me, you don't have to come here. You can meet me on the social media, on the satellite, on the television. To gain knowledge now, it's easy. Everything, the whole world has become a global village. You can Google. You can see the videos. You can see Peace TV. You can see the speakers of Peace TV. And if you go on the social media, if you go on Alhidaya, it's better. So Al Hidayah, you can select. It is a social media, which is a paid social media, unlike YouTube or, or Facebook. We can only upload videos. But the way you can see on Al Hidayah far superior, we have made it absolutely free. And one more good thing I'd like to mention that in the last couple of months, we have launched the OTD platform. That's over the top, where we are available on various different platforms, not only on the free social media, we are available on the, on the mobile, whether it's already there for many years, whether it be iOS or whether it be on Android, whether on the web, whether it be Safari, Chrome. Now we have gone on various televisions. 
They are available in Samsung, on LG, on Sony, on Heysen, on Fire, on Roku. So in the last few months, we have gone on OTT platforms over the top. And this is the streaming, which doesn't require satellite. So we are there on the satellite for many years, mashallah, since 2006. So now it's about more than 18 years that we are on the satellite. We are there on the social media, the free social media. We went on the paid social media, that is Ali there. Now recently, past few years, we have won OTT. That's over the top streaming that you can see on your television. You can see on your television. You don't require the, the satellite. You can come through the internet. You know, and this, in this way, the reach will increase. So surely you can, you can get a lot of knowledge. You don't have to have a satellite. Besides the Peach TV, besides the free social media, besides the paid social media, the OTT is also a very good platform. Hope that answers the question.